Hello, everybody. I wanted to discuss a technique for finding an unknown resistance using something called a Wheatstone bridge. And I think you'll notice that this is one of the homework problems we have, and uh, they can be tricky. So I want to show you how to do it. So you notice I've got a battery down here with EMF E, and it's hooked up across from X to Y right there that I've called that point. It's hooked up with this top branch being in parallel to the bottom branch, but they're also connected with an ammeter. So the goal would be to let current flow through this thing and then change the resistance in number three, which is what this arrow represents. You would dial the resistance up and down. It's called a potentiometer until the ammeter goes to zero. And when the ammeter, when this guy, when the current becomes zero, that means that the potential difference between the top and the bottom has to be zero. So again, you would change the resistance on number three until the current goes to zero. And then it turns out we can use uh, Kirchhoff's rules and uh, Ohm's law to figure out our X. The trick is to consider each individual, at least conceptually. There are a bunch of ways to do it, but uh, the thing that makes the most sense to me is to consider Ohm's law for each individual resistor and then see what we can do to equate those potential differences uh, for each resistor to one another. So let's try that. So I'm gonna find the potential difference in R1, which is the difference between X and T. So from here to there. So I'm gonna do this guy first. And that would be, so we'll call the current flowing through the top IT, and the resistance is R1. By the way, the current flowing through here, if we come all the way around, this is I top. And there, that is a R1 and R2 are in series, especially if there's no current flowing through the ammeter. R1 and R2 are in series, so the current's constant. And the same would be true down here. The current's flowing that way. We'll call that I bottom. So that means that if I do R3, the potential difference between point X and point B is I bottom times R3. And then we're going to go to the right-hand side. And let's do potential difference from top or T to Y. That's what's going through R2. And that's I top times R2. Again, the current between the current in 1 is the same as the current in 2 because they're in series. And the current in 3 and X is the same because they're in series. Okay? And then the potential difference for bottom and Y is the bottom current times the one we don't know. So a reminder here, the uh, whole point of using this Wheatstone bridge setup is that the current goes to zero between the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom have to have the same voltage. Uh, if that's true, if the top and the bottom have the same voltage, then um, I top R1 equals I bottom R3. That's helpful. And I top R2 equals I bottom Rx. That's helpful. Um, and there are a bunch of different algebraic things we can do, um, but let's divide this into this. Let's do that. Let's do I top R1 divided by I top R2, which means that I bottom R3, we can divide by I bottom Rx. And I think you can see why I did that. The I tops and I bottoms cancel. And we can cross multiply and get R1 times Rx equals R2 times R3, which means the unknown is the product of 2 and 3, the ones on opposite sides of the ammeter. So this guy and this guy, R2, oops, I scrolled, R2 times R3, and this divide by R1, which is the one that's opposite the unknown. And it'll always work that way. You can take the one the ones next to rx and multiply them and divide by the one opposite rx and that'll be your unknown resistance uh, okay that should actually work